After two months of staying in Sao Paulo, I'll share my experience on where to stay, where to eat, and where not to stay. Welcome to Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is the largest city in Brazil and the largest city in Central and South America by population. Sao Paulo is a cosmopolitan melting pot city, home to other large ethnic populations including Arab, Lebanese, Italian, Japanese, and Portuguese descendants. It is host to major events like Fashion Week, Comic Con, and LGBT Pride Parades. There are two airports that service flights to Sao Paulo, GRU and CGH. So be careful of which airport you choose when ordering transportation to and from the airport. Verify the correct airport based on your plane ticket. Uber is available in Sao Paulo. I used it for my airport transfer. A note on safety. Of all the countries I've visited so far, the two I consider highest risk are Mexico and Brazil in terms of the probability of being mugged, robbed, petty crime, or being held at knife or gunpoint. I say that not to deter you from visiting Brazil and Mexico, but you definitely need to have your wits about you and take precautions to reduce risk. The five areas I will cover are first in blue, the area between Madalena and Pinheiros, second in Cien, the lower part of Pinheiros, third in purple, areas around Avenida Paulista, including Jardins and Paraiso. In orange, Liberdaji, also known as Japantown, and fifth in green, Bella Vista, also known as Little Italy. <music> highlights the section between Villa Madalena and Pinheiros. It is a neighborhood style area with indie and hip vibes. There's a variety of restaurants, cafes, bistros, live music venues, and dance bars playing samba, soul, and funk music. There's street-side indie fashion stores, grocery stores, street art, contemporary art galleries, and medium-sized jiu-jitsu and fitness gyms. This cross-section between Madalena and Pinheiros is popular amongst locals and tourists. The overall atmosphere is generally safe uh, in comparison to other areas in Sao Paulo. The streets are well-lit, with many people, there's less sketchy streets and corners. The area is lively during the day and lively at night. Your stay in the section between Madalena and Pinheiros, if you want to prioritize a lively atmosphere during the day and at night, walking distance to restaurants and cafes, and walking distance to nightlife, live music, dance bars, and mingling with the locals. Seen, we have Lower Pinheiros, home to two large-scale modern shopping malls, Shopping El Dorado, Iquatemi Shopping, which is also home to Bodytech. Bodytech is top of the line in terms of gym facilities available in Brazil. In particular, Bodytech El Dorado, it is the flagship location, having a gym, pool, MMA area with Muay Thai bags, Jiu-Jitsu mats, and wrestling classes, included with membership, a dance studio, and a gymnastics and acrobatics area. The area is overall modern and new. The streets are well lit and has less sketchy streets and corners. Both the mall and the gym are a great way to meet and mingle with the locals. You'll choose to stay in Lower Pinheiros if you want to prioritize having close access to modern shopping complexes, modern large-scale gym facilities. In purple, we have Avenida Paulista. It's a lively avenue with an extensive shopping area. Home to big commercial shopping malls, large museums and galleries, a variety of restaurants and cafes, you'll find chain stores like Starbucks, McDonald's spread throughout the entire avenue, and it's also a major hub for the subway and bus lines of Sao Paulo. The two districts I recommend bordering Avenida Paulista is Jardines, which borders, borders the bottom midsection, and Paraiso, which borders the bottom end section of Avenida Paulista. Hardin borders lively Avenida Polista, but the area itself is also very lively with its own distinct atmosphere and vibes, with upscale international restaurants, stylish sushi bars, 
French bistros, and smaller fashion boutiques. While Paraiso, Paraiso borders lively Avenida Paulista, but the area is an upmarket residential area, more calm compared to Hardin's and Avenida Paulista, with a couple of ramen shops in the area. The overall atmosphere of this strip and the bordering uh, neighborhoods very lively during the day and at night. There are often events held during the weekends on Avenida Polista. Avenida Polista is well lit and it's commonly patrolled by police, especially during the weekend events. However, I've heard from other uh, Brazilians and people I've met, there are still occurrences of mugging occurring on this avenue, so don't let your guard down and be aware of your surroundings. You will choose to stay around Avenida Polista, such as Jardines and Paraiso, if you want to prioritize being near mutable, large-sized shopping malls, a variety of restaurants from fast food to fine international cuisines, access to public transportation, museums, and weekend events. In orange, we have Liberdade, also known as Japantown. Brazil is home to the largest Japanese population outside of Japan from migration waves in the early 1900s. In Liberdade, you'll find Japanese, Chinese, and Korean restaurants, such as ramen shops, sushi bars, Asian-style cafes and bakeries. There's Asian supermarkets, grocery stores, gift shops, daytime dry markets selling electronics, clothing, and accessories. There's mid-sized gyms in this area, including Top Fit and Smart Fit branches. The overall atmosphere is very lively during the daytime. In the evening, there's people visiting the restaurants and cafes located in Liberdade until 9 p.m. After 10 p.m., uh, Liberdade is a ghost town with almost no one in the streets. On Fridays and Saturdays, there are events held at Liberdade, such as anime cosplay events, samba dance performances just right outside the entrance to the subway, Metro Liberdade. On Saturdays and Sundays, a street market is hosted between 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. On the edges of Liberdade can be sketchy and risky, especially if you're walking towards Central. In Liberdade, I had experience staying at Kyoto Hotel. It's an excellent location. It's five minutes walking distance to most of the restaurants, cafes, and stores. Prices for rooms, 160 Brazilian reals or $30 USD. In Liberdade, one of my favorite places to eat is Udon Jinbei. Authentic udon, friendly prices, high quality, filling, and good protein portions. If you're traveling on a budget, but also want a warm and well-cooked meal, Aska Lamin is a very popular place amongst locals. Prices are cheap. Most items on the menu are under 30 Brazilian reals or under $6 USD. They are known for their pan-fried gyozas. Bom Suco, a cheap and yummy smoothie place to get in your daily vitamins and fresh acai. The Coffee, one of my favorite coffee chains in Brazil. Affordable, great price to quality ratio. For under 15 Brazilian reals or under 3 US dollars, you can get a nice cup of caffeine and flavor. You'll choose to stay in Liberdade if you want to prioritize being in walking distance to a variety of Asian restaurants and cafes, access to Asian supermarkets and dry markets. In green, we have Bella Vista, also known as Little Italy, centering on Pisiga along the street of Rua Tres de Mayo, containing numerous trattorias, pizza parlors, Italian eateries, and an excellent Vietnamese restaurant selling authentic dishes like pho, bum bo hue, and ben mi. You can also access Avenida Polista from Bella Vista, about a 20 minute walk or a 10 minute drive. The overall atmosphere is a quiet neighborhood with pockets of liveliness in certain spots. There are some sk sketchy streets and corners in this area. I'd say it's riskier compared to being in Madalena and Pinheiros. You would choose to stay in Bella Vista if you want to prioritize being within walking distance to Italian eateries or an authentic Vietnamese restaurant and being semi-close to Avenida Polista. In red, let's start with the areas I do not recommend. From my own personal experience, I would avoid central, historical, the city's downtown area, which includes Republica and Se. Although Google and Agoda recommend central, this is one of the few times where I disagree with Google and Agoda. Google has given Republica and Se high ratings, but from my experience and experiences of others while I was in Brazil, central is very dangerous. For example, on my first night arriving in Sao Paulo, I was hungry so I wanted to buy something to eat. Google Maps had shown there was uh, the convenience store OXO 
open near Cathedral Tase, located in Central. So I walked towards the Cathedral looking for the convenience store. Not only was Oxo not open, but there were three kids hanging out at the park late at night between the ages 10 to 14. They looked at me and then all three started to walk towards me. As they got closer, they picked up their speed while having one hand behind their back. I realized they were carrying some concealed weapon in their hand and these kids were going to mug me. So I immediately ran for it. Back to the, the direction of my hostel in Libdaji. I heard the area around Cathedral that say is also risky during the daytime. So I would just avoid Central altogether. Thank you for joining me this week in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Another iconic city in Brazil is Rio de Janeiro. If you would like to see my travel tips for Rio, you can find the link in the video description or at the end of this video. Hopefully I'll catch you guys at the next destination.